Okay, this is uh, a little video I put together for the coaxial indicators. There seems to be a lot of misinformation and uh, misunderstanding about how these indicators actually work. Um, there really seems to be a lot of just general misunderstanding about these uh, indicators because they don't read exactly the same as a standard dial test indicator and uh, they also come with varying um, probe lengths to accommodate different size parts, different diameter parts, um, things of that nature. The one thing that I've seen is that uh, people are using this indicator for tramming in of a bridge port or just a, a milling machine in general and that is one thing that this indicator was never designed to actually do. Um, they're only for finding center on a uh, diameter or um, an inside diameter or an outside diameter uh, component, um, either horizontally or vertically, horizontally being mounted in a lathe where you can indicate in a hole um, or you can indicate in a uh, tool post. Uh, I use these things quite frequently on a uh, CNC lathe to indicate in uh, tool posts on the turret or you can use them vertically in a standard uh, milling machine application to uh, locate a feature on your part. Now, okay, looking at the uh, graduations on the dial, the uh, face says that it's half thousandths or uh, five ten thousandths of an inch graduations. That is only true on a two inch probe on a two inch diameter. Um, anything outside of those parameters and the graduations are either going to become slightly smaller or in most cases they're going to become slightly larger. Um, what I mean by slightly smaller is that if you use the two inch probe and you're down at four inches uh, OD or ID uh, part, the graduations equal three ten thousandths of an inch and if you're at one inch with a two inch probe one inch OD or ID on a two inch long probe you're going to be at uh, five ten thousandths of an inch with forty millionths of an inch so it's going to be uh, fifty four with three zeros in front of it um, now the problem is, is people think that um, you can just throw in a longer probe and measure any uh, ID or OD and the uh, graduations um, are never going to change their value which it, it, it's kind of true because the dial face is a little misleading because it says right on the dial uh, 5 tenths well Blake the manufacturer of the original coax indicator um, has put together a chart that carries the uh, information, carries the uh, all the measurements from zero inches in ID or OD all the way to 12 inches ID or OD from a two inch, four inch, and six inch probe. And the worst measurement is a one inch diameter measurement with a six inch probe. You're actually reading one four six thousandths of an inch. Okay, so that's zero, a decimal zero zero one four six thousandths. So you just went three times the resolution, nearly three times the resolution that's called out on the face of the dial. Now this is my cheapy um, sixty dollar eBay special Shars tool um, coaxial indicator. It's not a Blake for what I use this thing for it's perfectly adequate. If I need uh, anything dialed in more accurate than within a thousandth of an inch uh, of center, I'm not going to use a uh, coaxial indicator. I'm going to use my inner rapid or my uh, Brown and Sharp best test tense indicator and swing it with an indicol and uh, do it right and um, eliminate, you eliminate a lot of uh, 
cosine error, you eliminate a lot of sag, you just eliminate a lot of errors in general, and then you don't have to do any calculations of trying to figure out exactly what all these little increments mean. Now, Blake has gone through the uh, trouble of putting together a nice little chart for everyone to use, and this can be found right on their website. Um, just look up a Blake uh, coax indicator through Google, it'll take you right there, go to the coaxial uh, indicator website, and it uh, has a link to this page, and as you can see, the numbers are all over the place when it comes to the feeler length and for the diameter of the um, part you're trying to measure. So, I've seen numerous videos on YouTube uh, of this thing, and people are changing out uh, probes, and they are swinging a diameter, or they're swinging a, uh, a, an offset um, granite plate, and they're trying to read an angle, and the, the deflection of the needle on the scale uh, is not changing. It's still deflecting the same amount. But what they don't realize is what the graduations actually represent is changing. So, in essence, the swing of the indicator, the amount that it's reading, is not the same, uh, even though it appears so. What you have to do is you have to look at um, what the value of the indicator, uh, what, what the dial value is representing, Okay, and then count up how many graduations your indicator is uh, reading and then multiply it by this value depending on what size feeler uh, you have in there and what diameter you're running off of. Even though the uh, uh, dial may swing the same distance, obviously if you're changing feeler gauges between say a three inch diameter well, you're going from four tenths to nine tenths to fourteen tenths on the different two, four, and six inch length uh, feelers. So right there, even if your needle is deflecting the uh, same amount, you've just doubled and tripled the amount of offset that um, you're reading. And then there's also a little bit of cosine error involved, but uh, the way these um, indicators are actually designed, cosine error is uh, pretty uh, nil um, in, in what they represent on the indicator. And uh, now my indicators, um, I check everything uh, based on uh, what I'm going to use it for. Uh, I check them against a known uh, dial test indicator. I have a good set of gauge blocks that are calibrated and um, I can double check anything uh, to those gauge blocks and confirm um, my readings uh, that way and, and, and calibrate everything off of those gauge blocks. Everything I have, whether it be a micrometer, whether it be an indicator, um, bore mics, whatever, um, you can double check uh, anything you have. I always check any uh, tool that I have to those gauge blocks or a tool that was referenced off of those gauge blocks so that you can trust the tool that you're using because if you do not have confidence in the tool that you're using um, it's just not going to be uh, a good idea to use and you're not going to have the confidence in machining your parts that you should. Um, what you need to do is set the um, indicator up swing it on a internal or external diameter, um, double check with a good known uh, to be accurate dial test indicator and see how, see how they compare. And I swung this one and the needle was flickering um, about one quarter of a graduation and granted, you know, that's a guess on my part, but it was swinging, uh, it, was, it was flickering about one quarter of a graduation was the best I could get it dialed in on an inch and an eighth diameter um, part that I had. And then I set up my brown and sharp uh, tense indicator 
swung that and my indicator, my tense indicator, did not move. And I had to double check it to make sure that everything was working properly and I had um, a little bit of preload on the needle and swung it again and it did not move. It maintained zero readout all the way around. So that means that the this uh, cheap um, Shars brand uh, indicator is just as accurate as my brown and sharp best test for the diameter that I was measuring and um, the conditions that I was measuring it under. So anytime you get any new piece of measuring equipment I recommend you either send it out to have it calibrated or if you're working out of your garage or something of that nature doing this thing as a hobby uh, at least verify it against something of a known accurate and trusted value so that um, you can make good, accurate measurements down the road and have confidence in the tool that you're using. Don't just pull these things out of a box and start using it thinking that they're um, good to go as they sit. Um, because a lot of times this Chinese stuff is nowhere near as good as it should be. Um, I'll tell you that right now. Um, my trusted indicators are all Swiss made, brown and sharps. My micrometers are either uh, brown and sharp or they're Sterrett's, and I do have a couple of um, Mitsutoyo mics. My calipers are Mitsutoyo's and brown and sharp's. Um, I go with 100% name brand stuff, and uh, you know that's quality. You get what you pay for when it comes to quality. Um, but this thing here um, is going to be just for something that's quick and fast. It'll get me within uh, one thousandths of an inch of center every time, so I'm not too concerned uh, about its inaccuracy that way. And um, if I need to get anything any uh, closer in uh, positioning than that, I'll use my uh, brown and sharps. I'll use my tense indicator to get it closer than that. Hope you uh, understand the use of these indicators a little better. Do not use these for tramming in a mill. That is not what they're designed for. Um, the, 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 the amount of error that you pick up by swinging the feeler out vertical, or excuse me, horizontal, um, perpendicular to the axis of the indicator, just induces so much error in these things that um, it, you may as well eyeball the uh, squareness of your mill and go with it that way. This thing was designed for indicating diameters and it was designed for indicating the inside or outside diameters only and from a zero or uh, up to a 12 inch diameter that's it that's all these things were ever designed for they're not designed to cheat and be able to tram in your milling machine uh, faster and please do not use those cheap double indicator uh, T-bar gizmos that you see with the little drop indicators on them. Those things are junk as well. Um, they only read over a six inch surface and they're not very accurate. If you decide to use something of that nature, you're just going to be asking for trouble. Uh, get yourself an Indicol and get yourself a hundred dollar brown and sharp indicator and swing that sucker as far as it'll go front to back on the table which on a standard bridge port is nine inches swing that whole nine inches it'll increase your accuracy by fifty percent because you're fifty percent bigger in diameter than a six inch and you can make finer adjustments and get that tram to better than a half a thousandths of being in tram um, and then you won't have any issue you won't be boring ovals uh, or ellipses in your parts and uh, you'll have a better representation of a true perfect circle um, on your parts. Thanks.